Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, today's video is going to be about VRAM comparison between uh, Sim Update 1 and Sim Update 2. By the way, if you're into flight simulation and aviation in general, I would highly appreciate if you guys can leave a like. Uh, that's what this channel is all about. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on the future videos. And if you ever feel like, oh, this guy is really boring and not uploading productive videos, you can always hit the unsubscribe button at any point. Uh, with that out of the way, let's uh, get into the settings so that you guys know what I'm working with here because VRAM highly depends on the settings that you're on. So I'm on full screen 2K DLSS quality and I won't go through all of them. I'll just roll them through here so that you can check it out. I have made separate settings videos. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave those in the description as well. Okay, so that's the settings that we are working with. Now, a couple of things about VRAM while I was testing it. VRAM varies quite a bit if you are panning the camera around. So I think we need to do a couple of tests here. One is uh, with still camera outside view. Second is with moving camera outside view. And then we'll do the still and moving camera in the cockpit as well. So we have been sitting here for enough time, I think, um, in the outside view with a still camera and looks like we are stabilized at somewhere around 9.5 gigs of uh, memory GPU memory being used by the way this is just my test so it might differ the performance might differ for you guys depending on how much VRAM you guys have on your GPU and whatnot because I've seen that if you give it enough VRAM like if you give it 24 GB VRAM it's going to use like 16 17 GB but this is just for my particular system but gives you a reference because it's a one-to-one -one comparison between the two updates so anyway 9.4 gb is where it has kind of stabilized and out of the 14.9 gb i have total 16 gb available vram but the sim only has 14.9 allocated to it uh, performance wise yes we're getting 70 fps so next let's check how much vram usage we get when we pan around so like you see when we pan around obviously it's loading different textures which were before not in the camera view so i'm getting somewhere around 10.2 10.3 again this will vary depending on how fast you're panning and things like that but on an average you can see that we are getting somewhere around 10.3 gb of usage here okay I think that's enough movement and we have our reference so remember these numbers I'll put them on the screen I guess now the second test is when we are in the cockpit and we have stabilized our uh, camera so you're not moving the camera here and like you can see in terms of performance you're getting somewhere around 65 to 70 FPS with the camera stable and I'm seeing that the VRAM usage is slowly declining and we are at roughly 9.6 9.6 GB of VRAM usage right now. Uh, so I think that's the number that we'll remember even uh, that that's the number we'll remember for the steady camera without any movement in sim update one 9.5 or something like that. So very similar to the outside view of VRAM. So now when we are moving around you'll see that we are going to 10.2, 10.4, 10.3, okay, 10.5. So you can say that it's varying somewhere between 10 to 10.5 GB VRAM usage when we are moving the camera around in the cockpit. So now we remember the four numbers, 9.5, outside is 10.3 inside still camera is 9.4 or 9.5 and then inside panning is somewhere between 10 and 10.5 okay now if it's a considerable improvement in su2 we should see that the vram is consistently staying below 9 gb in this exact scenario but let's jump into uh, let's jump into su2 now with the same settings and scenario and let's see what we get okay so here we are in sim update 2 now and uh, you can see that uh, in this outside steady view test our uh, 
VRAM was uh, 9.4 in SIM update 1 and right now in that steady view test we are at 8.8 .8 in uh, in the SIM update 2 which means close to around 600 to 700 MB of VRAM saving is what we are seeing here uh, switching from SIM update 1 to SIM update 2. Now like you remember when we were rotating the camera around we were getting somewhere around 10.2 to 10.3 uh, VRAM usage. So let's uh, move around the camera and let's see where we end up here. And I can't possibly move around the camera in the same manner that I did for SIM update 1 but I'm trying my best to uh, give max movements on my joystick. So it looks like uh, even if we move around camera quite a bit, we are still staying within 10 GB. Like I have, okay, we now see 10.05, 9.9. So our average on the previous test was 10.2 to 10.3. And it did go to that point, but it took a little bit to go to that point. 10.1, 10.12. So yeah, definitely we see that the VRAM usage is lower. But when you're moving around the camera, no, maybe not by a huge margin. We, we'll do landing test separately, you know, after doing the full flight. How does the how does the VRAM look like after doing like a four hour flight and compare the landings of both SIM update one and SIM update two. So stick around on the channel for that. But at least if we are moving around, we are clocking somewhere around 9.9, .9, I would say, which is a couple of hundred MBs lower than uh, SIM update one. Now let's move on to the inside view. And like I mentioned previously, you need to wait for a little bit for the VRAM to fully stabilize. So let's see what we stabilize at. Previously, we were clocking somewhere around 9.4 to 9.5 GB of VRAM. And right now we are seeing that we are already in the 8.9 GB range. Let's see if it goes down further. I think it's kind of stabilized. So very similar gains on, uh, on the inside view as well, maybe a little bit less, but overall, um, going from 9.4 to 9.5 GB of VRAM usage on SIM update 1 in cockpit view to 8.9 close to it's almost getting into that 8.8 .8 range as well so yeah I would say maybe like 400 500 maybe 400 500 MB of uh, of difference between uh, SIM update 1 and SIM update 2 so that's great. Now let's move around while pivoted to our captain's seat here and see how much VRAM increase we get. Remember on SIM update 1 we were getting 10, somewhere between 10 to 10.5 GB of VRAM usage. And looks like no matter how much I pan, we are staying within 10 GB here as well. Maybe I saw, f saw a spike going above 10 there but nothing crazy so yeah while panning around it seems like we are stabilized at 9.8 gb 9.7 gb not bad at all so coming down from like 10 10 to 10.5 to like 9.8 so again a couple of hundred 300 mb maybe depending on you know where you're looking at but yeah, that's the difference in VRAM that we are seeing. So again, this depends on the test conditions, your specs and whatnot. But this is just something that I wanted to show what I've observed. And again, there, like I said, there are more tests coming on the channel where we'll do a four hour long flight and just record the landing for SU1 and SU2 and see how the performance and the uh, VRAM usage looks like. So. Yeah, that's uh, coming, so stick around for that for sure. But I think that's it for today's video. So feel free to comment down below on what you think I missed here that I should have tested. And uh, if you've done this test on your own, I would love to know what results you guys are getting, uh, both in terms of performance and in terms of VRAM. I see that the performance is very transparent between SIM update 1 and 2 so far. 
at least with the A350 no matter where I load up but um, since they have said that they are doing some background testing with the memory uh, the performance can be a little bit lower like there's we, since we are sharing some memory data or something like that so the performance can be a little bit lower than what you would expect in the final sim update beta so it seems like there will be some performance improvements uh, from sim update 1 to sim update 2 because of that because if it's transparent right now that means it's bound to improve in the final version anyway enough rambling on that and uh, i hope that was helpful uh, like i said let me know what you think about this whole update and uh, how you guys have been testing it but thanks a lot for watching and please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss out on any of these videos and i will see you on the next one thank you